First off, it will begin on a Sunday at 8.30 p.m. at the Pines near Garabandal. Conchita also disclosed details concerning the specific dates of the incidents. Second, Conchita foretold that the miracles would begin in time for a saint's feast day who was a Eucharistic martyr. Thirdly, it will happen between April 23rd and May 30th, or during either of those months. Today, let us share with you some of the most ominous of prophecies by the visionary Conchita, who said that Our Lady had revealed that the warning would take place very soon. Before we proceed to the core of the message, we recite this short prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary. O Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our most gentle Queen and Mother, look down in mercy upon England, thy dowry, and upon us all who greatly hope and trust in thee. Pray for us all, dear Mother, that by faith fruitful in good works we may all deserve to see and praise God together with thee in our heavenly home. Amen. Numerous current events on a worldwide scale seem to support Garabandal's predictions that they are going to come true. The prophesies essentially describe a period of suffering for the entire planet during which a warning will be simultaneously given to everyone. Within a year of the warning, a miracle will occur at Garabandal, leaving a glaring sign for all to see. If people continue to reject the Lord after the miracle, the world will go through a horrific chastisement. The messages of Garabandal are extremely rare compared to Medjugorje, although they appear to be manifested by countless occasions and witnesses. The prophetess Conchita Gonzalez has openly stated the exact moment when some prophesies about the future of the world will begin to come true. One of the most astounding characteristics of the Garabandal apparitions, which took place in Spain at the beginning of the 1960s, is this one. According to her, there are three points worth of taking notice including. First off, it will begin on a Sunday at 8.30 p.m. at the Pines near Garabandal. Conchita also disclosed details concerning the specific dates of the incidents. Second, Conchita foretold that the miracles would begin in time for a saint's feast day who was a Eucharistic martyr. Thirdly, it will happen between April 23rd and May 30th, or during either of those months. Because of the specific prophesies that Conchita has made known in public, the Spanish apparitions are uncommon in the annals of Catholicism and have been a source of mystery for many years. Conchita, however, received two communications from the Blessed Mother before she discovered the precise dates that would indicate when the warning and the three predictions would take place. On October 16, 1961, the very first was delivered. Our Lady said, We must make a lot of sacrifices, do a lot of penance, and constantly go to the Blessed Sacrament. However, we must first live moral lives. If we don't, we'll suffer a punishment. The cup is already overflowing, and if we don't make a change, a severe rebuke will befall us. Conchita Gonzalez alone received the second communication from Our Lady, announced on June 18, 1965, I'm telling you that this is the last one because my previous message has not been followed and has not been made public. The cup was filled before, now it is overflowing. The route to perdition is being followed by a large number of cardinals, bishops, and priests, who are also stealing a large number of souls. The Holy Eucharist is being treated with even less reverence. By our own efforts, we should divert God's wrath from us. He will pardon you if you really seek His forgiveness. Many people originally ignored this second message as being utterly unlikely. How could Our Lady claim that priests, bishops, and cardinals were going to hell of all people? But now that we have the perspective of 60 years ago, we can understand that this message included a prophetic truth that was unthinkable in the 1960s. 
Recent revelations of the horrifying atrocities committed by both bishops and priests have shocked the church. Conchita's assertion was largely viewed in 1965 as being a work of human fiction because no one had considered this possibility. This is the last urgent warning that you will receive. Then, we'll be able to view both our good and bad deeds. In order to awaken humanity's consciousness and prepare everyone for the first prophecy, also known as the Great Miracle, the warning will be given. The pine grove sitting on a bluff above the settlement will be the site of the miracle. It will take place on a Sunday evening at 7.30 on or between the 20th and the 23th of April or May. The second prophesy is the term used to describe the tremendous sign. An everlasting, easily recognizable supernatural sign will follow the miracle and remain at the pines until the end of time. After the miracle, God will also bring a harsh chastisement. The punishment is referred to as the third prophecy. The approach of the great chastisement will be a highly perilous event for humanity if things stay as they are. On the unusual events that took place in Spain in the 1960s, the Catholic Church has not formally taken a position. This is the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, and may God shower you with blessings, love, and peace. Let us now recite a short prayer to the Blessed Mary for safety and protection during this very important time. Most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and health of the sick, at this time of great challenge to our country from the coronavirus, we consecrate to Jesus through your Immaculate Heart, ourselves, our family and the members of our parish. O oh Mary, when you appeared at Knock, you gave hope to your people in a time of distress, and brought them comfort in a time of sorrow. Be with us now as a sign of salvation and hope, as we entrust ourselves to your loving care. We renew the promises of our baptism and confirmation and ask your intercession that we may be always faithful to Christ and to his church. Bring under your mantle of protection all those who are suffering because of the coronavirus, and those who care for the sick and minister to their needs, as your Son implores us to do for one another. O loving Mother, at the foot of the cross, with steadfast faith, your Immaculate Heart was pierced by grief at the suffering of your Son. You know what we need during these difficult days. Help us, O Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us, He who took our sufferings upon Himself, and bore our sorrows to bring us, through the cross, to the joy of the resurrection. O Blessed Mother, our life, our sweetness and our hope, we wish that this consecration be for the glory of God and that it lead us safely to Jesus your Son. Remember, O Most Gracious Virgin Mary that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word Incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer me. Amen.